Good morning, students. Uh, what I'd like to talk to you about today is fitting uh, nonlinear models. So we're going to do this in two pieces. We're going to start off with fitting intrinsically linear models. You can see that's what I've got up on the board already, a little bit prepared. Um, once we talk about fitting intrinsically linear models, I'm going to go and show you how to do it in Excel. Then I'm going to switch back to the board, talk a little bit about fitting um, linearizable models, um, which works a little bit differently with the same idea, um, and then go and show you how to do that in Excel. Okay? So we're going to start off with fitting intrinsically linear models. Um, so intrinsically linear models, remember, are models of this form, where you have a coefficient times a function of x, uh, which in this first case is just um, the function 1, um, then a coefficient times a function of x, in this case x, coefficient times a function of x, which might be x squared, coefficient times a function of x, and so on. And so you could see both of these models, even though they're very different, fit that same paradigm. Um, so the functions of x are very different, um, and I have the coefficients labeled slightly differently, but fundamentally it's coefficient times function of x plus coefficient times function of x plus coefficient times function of x. Okay? And so these are two traditional um, intrinsically linear models that you should know how to fit. Um, the first one is very familiar. This is a polynomial. Um, so of course you could keep going. You can fit a polynomial of arbitrary degree. You could go x to the fifth, x to the sixth, however high you want to go. Um, in practice, uh, and we won't get too much into the theory of this in this class, we don't generally do models much above. Um, this is a quartic model, uh, order four. We don't usually go much above that um, because as you start to fit higher degree polynomials, um, the problem is, is that while they might fit the data, uh, if you have data points like this, you can fit a polynomial, you can fit a polynomial exactly through these points um, if you take arbitrarily high degree. The problem is, is that a lower order polynomial might actually be a better fit for the model right? Because this might just be random error that's accumulating, and so a linear model might be the better fit for this particular data. The other thing that can happen, um, and you can see this just by experimenting with fitting higher and higher degree polynomials, if you have data um, that can get certain patterns in it, po higher order polynomials can end up giving you really bad fits, right? Where you get like this super low peak, pretend that goes all the way down to the floor of my office, um, and then back up, right? Because it fits that polynomial, and polynomials can wildly vary. And so you can see this by fitting um, higher and higher order polynomials. In practice, like I said, we usually don't go much above um, degree three, uh, order three polynomials, or order four polynomials at the most. Okay? The other model I have up here is a little bit more complicated. This is what's called a Fourier polynomial. And Fourier polynomials are for fitting periodic data. So a lot of times you'll find that you have data which has um, some sort of periodic pattern in it. Um, so like it might repeat every year or every month or something like that. And so Fourier polynomials are really good for this. Trig functions we know repeat um, every so often. Okay? And so the way you set up a Fourier polynomial, say that your data set repeats every uh, k points. So that's the variable that I've got up here. Um, so for example, the one that we're going to see in the Excel spreadsheet repeats every eight units. Okay? And so if it repeats every eight units, what you're going to try and do is get um, trigonometric functions that also repeat uh, that many every that many units. Okay? And so the simplest way to do this is to start off with this first term. So sine of 2 pi x over k um, and cosine of 2 pi x over k. If you think about the period of a trigonometric function, um, these two functions are going to repeat every k units. So naturally, the period of sine is 2 pi. Um, if you divide by 2 pi over k, which is the um, uh, 
frequency term here, then you get the wavelength. And so that tells you that every k units this is going to repeat. Okay, so if you don't believe me, you can graph sine of 2 pi x over 10, for example, and you'll see that that's a sine wave that's stretched out over 10 units. Same way with cosine. Okay, so that's one trig function that repeats every k units, but there are actually lots of them. So if you take that 2 pi x over k um, and multiply it by another number, so for example, multiply by 2, you get 4 pi x over k, um, sine of 2, 4 pi x over k, cosine of 4 pi x over k. Both of these repeat twice in k units, okay? Which means they repeat every k units also, right? They just go through the pattern, they do the whole trig thing twice in that period. Similarly, 6 pi x over k is going to repeat three times um, in that period of k units, okay? And so all of these are good models for anything that's repeating every k units because what they're going to do is they're going to fill in different pieces. This a1, b1, a2, b2, a3, b3 are going to change the amplitude. And so you can actually get very sophisticated um, kind of graphs of periodic data just from um, this kind of approximation. And we'll see that when we go to Excel. Um, it's actually kind of um, amazing how, how quickly it approaches the actual data. Okay, so let's go to Excel now and see how we can do this in Excel. I'm going to walk you completely through the, through the polynomial example um, and then the Fourier polynomial, which follows the same example, but the terms are a lot more complicated. Um, I've already got done and I'll walk you through that.